Hello, everyone. I'm David, part of the Australian Student Christian Movement. We have a special guest with us today. Can you please tell us who you are and where you are? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Leng Ngoc Bitli, so please call me Dr. Lee. Uh, I am from Vietnam, but now I work at Payap University uh, at the Department of Peace Studies. Um, and so very nice to... Um, to be invited uh, for this interview. Thank oh, you. Oh, we love having you. Now, we have a tradition in Australia where we acknowledge the traditional owners on the lands on which we meet and acknowledge our Indigenous uh, elders past, present and emerging. Now, ASCM, one of its pillars is peace, working for peace. Now, that's the area that you're in. So can I just ask you personally, are you optimistic or pessimistic when it comes to peace in the world? Um, I think, you know, to to help peace, we all have to make efforts. It's not to be pessimistic or optimistic, but it's our uh, duty. Uh, if we want to have a peaceful life, we have to make efforts and move towards peace. So I think uh, pessimistic will not help. But if we think positively, we will have more energy yeah, to, to make our life and our world better. Excellent. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the department that you run, the Peace Department? Okay, sure. So the Department of Peace Studies, um, it, it has a long history. Um, it started first uh, with the Institute for the uh, Study of Religion and Culture. Uh, it was established by the Presbyterian missionary from Un the United States. So when they came to Thailand and then uh, they discovered that it would be good if, you know, uh, they uh, have a new perspective rather than converting the Thai into Christianity uh, because they face resistance, you know, from Thai culture and from uh, kind of uh, Thai uh, people because Buddhism uh, rooted deeply in Thailand. And so then they, the missionaries, they started to uh, change uh, their view. So um, they uh, established a new way of uh, kind of doing things. Uh, it's called interfaith dialogue. And so some of them, they uh, started the, this institute for the study of religion and culture uh, to kind of initiate dialogue between Buddhists and Christians uh, to build mutual understanding and harmonious uh, relationship between Buddhists and Christians uh, in Thailand. And gradually the um, institute kind of um, uh, developed and it ran uh, some kind of um, uh, famous programs like Sinclair Thompson Lecture Series and that attracted um, some renowned uh, leaders from Buddhism and Christianity such as Buddha Dasa, he's a famous monk uh, in Thailand and so they involved in interreligious dialogue uh, that involved a uh, big crowd, you know, from the public. And the Institute also organized, uh, you know, world conference, a big conference um, to bring religious scholars and leaders from all over the world to come and um, kind of present um, their uh, knowledge uh, on, you know, religions. And gradually until around 2009, uh, the Institute developed a new component, peace. So the Institute changed the name into the Institute of Religion, Culture, and Peace. Uh, and so uh, from that time, the Institute expanded its mission to include peace building, um, especially in Southern Thailand and um, other parts uh, in in Asia, such as Sri Lanka, Myanmar, you know, and and where else, uh, and then um, Payap University, because the institute is located 
at Payap University in Chiang Mai, Thailand. And so Payap University uh, thought that it uh, would be good to establish an academic program and uh, that would be more sustainable. And so then the Department of Peace Studies was established and the PhD program in peace building was founded and then we received, you know, students in 2010. And until now, already 13 years. Um, and so uh, we, we received students from all over the world, from, you know, from the US and from uh, Korea, Singapore, from Europe too, like the Netherlands, Germany, and Southeast Asia, especially from Myanmar, we have almost half of the students from Myanmar. Um, and so we have uh, three uh, programs, uh, the four year PhD program in peace building uh, that includes uh, courses and dissertation. So this program is for uh, students uh, who has a an MA not in peace studies, but from other disciplines. So they come, they have to learn kind of peace theory. So they have to take courses and then they do their dissertation. And we have two year PhD program in peace studies, uh, in peace building. And that is for students who already have an MA in peace studies or, you know, related fields. And so they just do their dissertation. And we also have certificate program in peace studies um, since last year. And that uh, program is open for all people in the community um, who want to study peace. And um, uh, they are good at English because it's an international program. So they can join and learn about peace. Yeah, that's about our program. Excellent. Now you mentioned the, the link to religion and kind of interreligious dialogue. How do you kind of view religion in peace? Is, is religion, can you give us a bit of information about what that looks like, religion and peace and conflict? Because we have some people who say, oh, Christianity, you know, look what you're doing, crusades and all the wars. What's your, can you, what's your view on that? Yeah, so uh, religion and peace building, uh, I teach this course uh, for the PhD program. So we look at religion as ambivalent rather than the, the good religion or the bad religion, you know. So some people look at religion as completely bad. Uh, it has no use. It is a problem maker, thing like that. And they try to throw religion away. Uh, that is one extreme. Another extreme is some people think, oh, religion is good. It's from kind of um, people who have different in their own tradition and then they think everything is good. But for in this course, we look at religion as ambivalent. Religion can be manipulated to fuel conflict. And in reality, we see many conflicts in the world have religious dimension. So we look at like, you know, the conflict in Palestine uh, also involves religion. And in Southern Thailand, we have Muslims and Buddhists, right? And in Sri Lanka, you know, everywhere we can see that religion uh, kind of uh, involves in violent conflicts. Yeah. Uh, and we have terrorism, right? Um, around the world. So that all involves religion. So why we study religion? Because religion help us understand why terrorists, they act the way they do. How religion is manipulated uh, to fewer conflicts, uh, to understand it better, the mechanism. So that's one side. The other side is, uh, we look at religion as resource for peace building. So the, some scholars believe that the treatment of bad religion is not no religion, but good religion. So we need religion to transform the bad religion. So religion, we can see many good examples uh, of religious peace building. We have, you know, many renowned religious leaders in the world who uh, they embody peace in their life and they have great influence on people. Uh, such as Thich Nhat Hanh, um, he's 
he has great influence and he can, he help people transform their suffering. And so that is one way that we see a religion can contribute a lot to peace building. Now you mentioned some of the conflicts like in Palestine, uh, Southern Thailand. Can you give us a, a bit more information about some of the conflicts that you study, that you look at? Um, in my view, I'm more into the inner peace than into the political dimension. At my department, like we have uh, three faculty members now, and each of us has our own expertise and area of research. So if we talk about, if you ask me about uh, a big conflict, you know, at the national or ethnic level, then it should be Dr. Mark Tam Thai. He is an expert in the southern conflict in Thailand. Uh, so he kind of mediated this conflict for several years. And he knows a lot about this. And uh, for another faculty member, Dr. Ray, Ray T. So he's more into NGO issue and, you know, peace building with uh, religious NGOs. He worked for Christian Conference of Asia before for, you know, for more than four years, something like that. And he did um, his mission, his task was peace building um, for the church in Asia. So they did several kinds of activities um, in, uh, you know, countries, in churches where they experience conflicts. Uh, for me, I'm more into inner peace and gender issues. So I I explore more about the doctrinal philosophy of religion, how religious values um, can contribute to cultivating uh, characters, you know, to peace education, things like that. Excellent. So can you tell us more about your work, about inner peace? <laughs> um, so... In my course, of course, um, you know, for a PhD course, we don't talk much about doctrine because that is for BA level. But at PhD level, we talk more about theories. So how to use uh, theory to apply and study uh, religious phenomena like conflicts or how religious people build peace. Um, if we talk about inner peace, uh, for me, I only integrate that component into my course. So what I did is I, uh, in my class, every class, I devote about 15 to 20 minutes at the beginning of each class session for meditation. Uh, it is not like Buddhist meditation, sit in quiet, no. It's about meditating wisdom codes. So I kind of intentionally uh, selected some wisdom codes from various traditions um, uh, about a certain topic to convey a certain message. And then in that session, I will ask the students to meditate in silence, and then they will share uh, uh, their favorite codes among the codes that I, I show. And they share their experience. And when students share together, they learn from each other. And that's how uh, I hope that this activity can uh, kind of cultivate uh, the students how to live wisely in their lives, you know. So the idea is that you give them inner peace or help them get inner peace and that will influence their behaviour, whether they're politicians or soldiers or w whatever they do. And that will yes. translate into kind of peace in the broader... Yeah, yes. Uh, I forgot to tell you one more thing. Uh, at our program, like since last year, we developed a new component. Uh, we call it the Religion, Culture and Peace Laboratory. Uh, because we thought that uh, for the academic program, students can only learn about, you know, academic things like theory, knowledge, research. But what about other skills uh, necessary to be peace builders. And so this uh, laboratory is to train students practical skills uh, outside of the academic, you know, thing. So we had uh, several projects to develop uh, different skills for students. 
such as um, uh, Dr. Mark Tam Chai, he has a project on how to build uh, resilience, uh, emotional, uh, spiritual kind of um, uh, control, you know. When you are a peace builder, how you deal with your own emotion, stress, this and that, when you face kind of uh, intractable conflicts, things like that. And then Dr. Ray has several projects on cross-cultural and cross-religious uh, communications. So in this project, students are exposed to kind of different religious uh, communities through field trips and, you know, lecture, this and that. And so they can uh, kind of explore themselves to the religious others. Um, and we also had projects on uh, storytelling and resilience um, uh, workshop that will help students uh, kind of uh, how to use various ways to, to build peace, like how to tell stories, to teach uh, children and maybe old people because it, it's interesting way, you know, to convey the peace message and so to teach people why violence is wrong, what is a better way, another way of solving uh, conflict, something like that. Yes. Are students uh, surprised by anything when they do your course or any of the courses? Are they surprised? Do they come in saying, oh, I thought peace was going to be this? Or what are, what are some things that they're surprised by? Uh, I, I don't understand yet. Could you please uh, repeat so that question? When people think about peacemaking or what a what a course will be, they might have ideas. Oh, she's going to teach me this or she's going to teach me that. Are they surprised to learn that? Oh, actually, peacemaking is bigger than they think or it involves meditation or are there any things that shock them when they come to the university and go, oh, I didn't know you did this? <laughs> yeah, um, of course, there is always new knowledge, of course. That's why students have to learn. Uh, no one knows everything. Um, of course, I believe the students, um, of course, surprise is one of the emotions. Uh, boring, also another of the thing, you know, some, most of our students come as practitioners, you know, they are middle uh, career, in their middle career, you know, and so they have a lot of experience, knowledge, but they don't know how to frame it academically. And so our program is to bring them here to learn new theories, to reflect on their experience and to produce new knowledge, uh, how to integrate into the literature, yeah, and uh, how to produce uh, academic work. Uh, so uh, here we give students freedom to articulate how they understand about peace. We don't impose any one way. And so we just help the students in each subject, what it means, and here are the debates, what scholar things, and what about you? Yes. I think that's great what you what you said about there isn't just one way, because I think sometimes it's, oh, you have peace building or peacemaking. There isn't just one way. There isn't just one conflict. There isn't just one approach. What's your relationship? What's the, uh, the peace department's relationship with kind of, different religious groups in, in Thailand? Is there a lot of involvement? Um, here, it's more about individual uh, networking rather than uh, institution network. Um, you know, uh, it depends on our own uh, kind of individual, how active we are and how we have built our own network. And from there, we can kind of utilize the network we have and uh, we create uh, projects or service together with um, the religious others. So Dr. Ray here, he worked for a long time and he has his own interfaith network here in Chiang Mai. And so all the time he tried to get them involved and they also get us involved in their projects too. So we have our network. For me, I also have my own network. Uh, you know, uh, over the years, I accumulate my own network. And so when I design the projects, I think of my own resource. I cannot design something which I, I, I don't have resource. I mean, there are, there, I don't have people who help me. So that, that's what we do here. So it goes with individuals rather than with institution. And you said that you have people from all over the world coming um, to your 
centre? Why do they choose to come to Thailand? Um, we, we um, you know, based on what I I learn and I perceive uh, from the students uh, over the past uh, six years I've been working here, there are uh, some main reasons. Uh, some students come here because they know um, uh, Dr. Mark Tam Thai, uh, because he's quite well known in Thailand about his experience in peace building, and he also involved in international peace building network. And so people, they are interested and they kind of, they have confidence um, in this program because of, you know, his influence. <laughs> so they come and they enroll. That's some of students. Some others, uh, they come here through the other PhD students who are already with us. When they study here and they feel the atmosphere, they are taken good care of. They feel happy, <laughs> and so they they kind of they introduce others. You know, they invite others. Please come and study here. It's good, <laughs> and so we have many students like that who come through other students, and another some other students. Um, they serve on the website. Uh, they learn from the website because they have that interest. And they also like Chiang Mai. <laughs> because Chiang Mai is a beautiful place. In Thailand, there are kind of two, three PhD programs in peace studies. Um, two in Bangkok and one here in Chiang Mai. Uh, when they choose which one, then they consider the place. So, of course, they don't like Bangkok. Because it's so <laughs> kind of a noisy thing like that. And they prefer Chiang Mai, very peaceful life. And so some come to our program because they like Chiang Mai. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about Chiang Mai? Uh, Chiang Mai is in the northern part of Thailand. So it is um, quite close to the, um, the border with uh, Myanmar. So it's um, in the past, it's belonged to another kingdom. We call Lanna Kingdom. Uh, in the south, we have uh, another kingdom, um, Ayutthaya, thing like that. Uh, and Chiang Mai, you know, is good because here, the atmosphere here in Chiang Mai, for example, before it was very cool. It, it's, it's, the weather was nice. It's surrounded with mountains. Uh, and especially the people are very kind, very nice people. Uh, they are very calm. You, you don't hear noises very often in public, even in the markets. People are so patient. And it's quite secure here in the public. You, you don't have to be afraid of, you know, being stolen or this and that, you know. So it, it's quite good. And the food is very delicious. Yeah, many good things. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Buddhism is the main religion in, in Thailand. That's the majority religion. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. The Theravada Buddhism. Can it's, you tell us a little bit about what that is? Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> Buddhism, uh, basically, there are two, two big denominations, right? Mahayana Buddhism and Theravada Buddhism, we call the Southern Branch. So when the 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 first uh original Buddhism kind of from India, right, spread out. So one branch spread to the south. We go southern Buddhism to Sri Lanka, to Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia. And the northern Buddhism is Mahayana from to China, to uh, Korea, Japan, Vietnam. Yeah. And so this is the Theravada. And uh, people believe that the Theravada Buddhism is the closest to the original form of Buddhism. They use the scripture, the Buddhist Pali Canaan. Uh, the Mahayana, they have their own descript, uh, developed scriptures. And Theravada Buddhism, it's uh, focused more on meditation, ethical uh, living, uh, ethical disciplines. Uh, 
um, Mahayana, they have uh, various uh, branches, you know, it, and uh, it's more into devotional form of Buddhism. And for people who may watch this interview and want to help make the world a more peaceful place, what would you encourage them to do? I mean, of course, they can come to Thailand and study, but if, if they're not going to kind of travel, what can they do to work for peace? What's something that's a, an effective way that they can help? Ah, um, we can, I, I, from my own experience, uh, perspective, we, peace start from our inner, inner self, inner peace. When we have peace inside, uh, we can spread it out. <laughs> So the world will feel peace, you know. We will have peace, peaceful relationship, and then peaceful community. A good leader, you know, will lead people in a good way. So we start with individual cultivation of peace. If you don't, you don't have condition or resources to to learn about peace building in Thailand, Chiang Mai here. You can still build peace and learn about peace uh, from your own uh, learning. So by reading books. And by cultivating your, you know, your good virtue uh, in your daily life, uh, you, 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 you build peace already, you know. So I believe more into lifelong learning and individual um, uh, uh, peace um, as the cell, the, the root for wider peace in the world. And can anyone do it? Do you you teach that within a piece, anybody can do it. They just have to kind of really cultivate it. Uh, uh, this is a good question. Um, from uh, what I see, well, based on my own experience too, uh, sometimes we don't know how to do it, you know? We just live uh, our, our instinct. <laughs> and so to cultivate peace, we need to, to learn. We need to search for a good way, a good teacher uh, to teach us and we can learn how to do it. And when we learn, you know, we accumulate the skills of how to learn and then how to reflect, how to think uh, rationally, uh, how to discern uh, what is peace, what is unpeace, what is good, bad, this and that. And then we can, you know, grow uh, in our cultivation and build uh, our character um, to be uh, a better, better person, better version each day. So I think education is important. And today we we are very lucky. We are very blessed to have various channels for our self study. Uh, I believe there are many things online. But the thing is, we, we need to be wise to select um, what to learn, what is good for us. And I know this might depend on, on which course you do, but what is lesson one for somebody who wants inner peace? What do you tell them to do first before anything um, else? <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think maybe reflect on um, this is a hard question for me <laughs> but right. maybe from, from my own experience uh, I start from my own suffering because that's where I feel problematic when I suffer I'm not happy and I, I'm not the person I want to be and I affect I influence very negatively on others too so I start with my own suffering and I try to overcome my suffering. So I look out for ways that I can help myself to transform my suffering. And during this journey, this process of searching uh, to get out of my suffering, I find a way, I find a teacher and I learn a lot. Sometimes it's not good, but the more I keep learning, the more I know until I feel satisfied in one way that it helps me improve and I can experience the results. Um, then uh, yeah, I think this is the, 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 the good way for me, suitable way for me to move forward. 
so that's my experience. But people are different. They can start differently. Some people are lucky to be exposed to already good ways of, you know, good tradition, good way. So why not exploring the tradition you have first and find the good value in there? And if you you feel like this is enough, it's not enough yet, then you can explore more. And you talked earlier about the interfaith dialogue that happens. Can you give us some examples of, of what that looks like at your university? Is it just people coming together, talking, having dinner? Can you talk a little bit about what that looks like? Yeah. Uh, interfaith dialogue has various forms. Uh, talk is one of the forms. Uh, we, we have done a lot of talking, uh, especially like lectures. Uh, from, we invite, uh, you know, religious leaders, scholars uh, from various religions to come to the class and talk or to come to seminar or conference uh, to talk, uh, to share their ideas on a particular theme. So that talking. We also have a dialogue of action, uh, cooperation, so here we have a tree planting project. So we involve, like we invite religious leaders uh, from different traditions in Chiang Mai to come and uh, together we planted two trees. And our message is that we care. Our interfaith uh, community, we care for the environment and we can do something to improve <laughs> the environment. So that's our action, that's what we do too. Um, and study is another thing. Uh, so reflection, study, the other traditions. So that's, I, I do a lot in my, in my class. So I have scriptures of Confucianism, Taoism, uh, Buddhism, Christianity, and the students have to read and then reflect. Yeah. Now, this might be a tough question. Do you have a, a favorite story from one of the religions that you talk about a, a favorite uh, verse about peace or a, a, anything like that you, you mentioned you know confucianism and, and Taoism. is there any kind of famous famous or favorite story you have about peace uh, from those from those traditions uh maybe shock uh, uh poetry or uh, saying wisdom codes, things like that. <laughs> because stories have so many stories. Um, I like uh, Lao Tzu's um, teaching. Uh, mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. No, that's that's very powerful. Thank you so much for, for joining me to talk to you about this. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. So I hope every one of us, wherever we are, uh, we have the opportunity and we have resources for cultivating peace, starting from ourselves. So if we want to see peace in the world, uh, start first with us.